Let us continue a focus on housing. We just chatted with the senior economist of the National Association of Home Builders about their index. So that's just new homes. What about existing homes? And more importantly, what about mortgage debt? All that is debt that is floating around that the Fed is no longer buying up. Is it a good deal? David Castillo is in this market. He's senior managing director at Further Lane Securities. They trade, they buy, they've got all kinds of creative ideas around mortgage debt. David, good to see you again. Good to see you, Brian. All right, I, I know from the, what we call in the business a pre-interview mm -hmm. that uh, you are heavily buying second liens. In other words, not the straight-up mortgage, but the, the equity lines. Yeah, the home equity lines. The HELOCs on debt. Lines, yes. That would seem to me to be the riskiest portion and the first thing people wouldn't pay. Why, why are you buying up this debt? You know what we're finding is in our research shows us is that if you look at the second lien market, people are tending to stay current on the balances that are smallest to deal with. Uh, and also, too, you can renegotiate with your lender, usually on the first, um, and renegotiating the seconds isn't necessarily as important because you can modify the amount you pay every month by your biggest monthly component. Well, if you can renegotiate the first but not the second, why wouldn't the second be the first thing that people stop paying? Well, because it's a smaller balance. I mean, they got, you're usually, if you look at Americans, their biggest monthly payment is their home mortgage. That's the number they're going to deal with first. And what we found during this, um, during this contraction, and now as we're starting to see some semblance of recovery, that people are still continuing to pay their seconds. Um, and the modifications that are going through right now through the various federal programs that you've seen is really focused on the first. Um, there's a little been a little bit of a hiccup in so far as thinking about that the federal programs that are outstanding may in fact force like some principal reduction balances on the bonds. Like people owe so much money and that amount may be reduced on the overall amount of money they own. Um, so that's kind of impacted the market. Um, but on the second lien mortgages, we've seen that to be a terrific opportunity. I mean, because that hasn't been the case. Well, we've also seen monthly payments come down for individuals. As interest rates have fallen, if it's variable, right, th that payment's going to come down, I guess, making, to your thesis, it being easier to continue paying. Correct. But from an investor's point of view, owning the debt, you guys are getting paid pretty good money to own this stuff. I mean, it's awesome. I mean, the, the great thing with it is, is that a tremendous amount of this debt was underwritten, especially um, 06 and 07. And the, um, the, the thing is, is that these uh, loans backed by, uh, securities backed by these loans don't qualify under the, uh, under the federal program, uh, the uh, PPIP initiative. PPIP, so, yeah. yeah, so you can't get any leverage on this via PPIP program. So the bonds themselves are going to trade at a yield that's relative to the risk associated with it. Like if you took PPIP away from a lot of the other loans um, or the securities that qualify under that program, you'd actually see a, uh, actually a higher rate of return on those bonds. They've rallied significantly. The seconds have not because all your return is predicated on the cash that's coming from those bonds. Like what? Like what, what average return on an average HELOC loan out there right now is, and the for you, is what? Oh, anywhere from 13 to 17 percent. 13 to 17 percent. So correct. even if a borrower is paying 5 percent yeah. on that home equity line of credit, your investors are getting paid or you are getting paid 13 to 17 yeah. percent. How? how Where's the disconnect? Well, the disconnect there is, is that a lot of these uh, securities, you know, maybe floating rate, maybe fixed rate, but you also have principal amortization that's coming. People are not necessarily paying back their seconds. They're defaulting, but a portion of the money that they're defaulting on flows through as a principal payment to the bondholders because that's the nature. You've got to liquidate the loan. You've got to liquidate the asset, per se, and that's flowing through, and you're buying these anywhere from 25 to as much as 50 cents on the dollar. So you're getting a, a big chunk of your return as a function of the principal repayment that goes along. But we talk about foreclosures. What if a big portion of these aren't paid? They're paying now, but let's say things get worse. Well, let's hope they don't. But what if uh, they... I mean, you're paying, you're paying 25 to 50 cents on the dollar, so they don't. Big deal. I mean, so I mean, the expectation. Well, is, and, and, and also, then half of them could go bust, and you would still make money. Yeah, they, you still make money. And a lot of our analysis assumes that on these loans, you may lose anywhere from 105 to 110 cents on the dollar on the actual loans outstanding in there, um, which you know may sound counterintuitive to get that return. But actually, the case is as a result of the liquidations as you're going through the process, cash does flow through from those because you know a, it's worth something. It may not be what it's once worth. You know, maybe worth you know, 50 um, or 40 percent of its original value, but it's worth something. And there is nothing else in the fixed income market that is returning even close to this, right? No, Maybe with the exception of Greek debt soon. Yeah, I mean, I don't know anything about the, <laughs> I don't know anything about the Greeks, maybe a gyro or something, but um, the main thing is that I do know is that I don't see anything in the cash market that's this attractive right now. And from a risk-reward perspective, I mean, we think it's a very, you know, it's a wonderful opportunity. That sounds like a lot of return. David Castillo, Further Lane Securities, always a pleasure to get your insight. Thanks. Thanks Let's a lot. Come back. There you go, Dagan, 13 to 17 percent. That's your kind of money.